real quick. So let me make sure I got your first question right. You were asking if the other nations believe in what this Bible says, can they still get the kingdom, basically? All right, Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. Because the answer, the short answer and the correct answer is hell no. Why? Because this book was given only to God's people. Yes, it wasn't right. given to everybody. But guess what? There was a time that some people of the heathen came and asked this very same question that you're asking right now. Come on. The book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 1. Now, when the adversaries of Judah. Now, listen to this. It says the adversaries. What's the adversary? Is that your friend? Adversary, adversary. When, when somebody your adversary, exactly. It said the adversaries of Judah, right? One of the twelve tribes of Israel is actually talking about these top three tribes right here. Come on. And Benjamin huh? heard that the children of captivity built the temple of the Lord. So they was rebuilding the temple at this time. Listen, come on, read fast. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you. For we seek your God as you do. You see that? What they ask him? Read it again. Yeah. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you. He said, Let us build with you. Come on. For we seek your God as you do. He says, We seek the same God you seek. What God? The God of this Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What was the response from my forefathers? What did they tell them? Come on. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Azor, Hadad, king of Azor, which brought us up hither. Verse 3. But Zerubbabel and Jesh Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel, the leaders of our people, they gave a reply to the heathen because they said, come on, let's all join hands and build this temple together. We believe in your God. We want to keep his commandments. We want to do the things that you all do. Right. What did our forefathers tell them? Come on. They said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us. Oh, read that again. Ye have nothing to do with us. It says ye have nothing to do with us. You can say whatever you want to about it, but guess what? That ain't going to change the words in this book. Right. You understand? Right. Come on. What you got to say? At the same time, you said what? You spiritually woke? Okay. So what that mean? Uh huh. Now, spiritually woke. What you mean by that? I want I want to get an understanding. They ain't got a Holy Spirit. They ain't got a Holy Spirit. I'm gonna show you. Give me John chapter six verse sixty three, and then I want Psalms chapter one. Uh, actually, I want Second Ezra three thirty six after that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something. Watch this. Come on. The book of the book of John chapter six and verse sixty three. No. It is the spirit that quickens. It says it's the spirit that quickens. It changes you. Come on. The flesh profiteth nothing. Uh -huh. you, your flesh ain't gonna profit you nothing, right? The words that I speak unto you, uh -huh. they are spirit. They are spirit, and they are life. It says, and they are life. So, what is the spirit? What's the spirit of God? What is the spirit of God? Yep, the words in the book. What is the word? It says the words, right? Well, read it again. Read yeah. it again. It is the spirit that quickens. Listen, listen to it. It is the spirit that quickens. It says the spirit that quickens. The flesh profiteth nothing. Your flesh is not going to change. The things that you're doing in your flesh ain't going to change. Come on up, sis. We got we are going over a good topic right now. You don't want to be on camera? All right, all right. I'll pray. Come on. The words that I speak unto you. It says the words. The words that I speak unto you. What was he speaking? He was speaking the Old Testament at that time. Right. right? Because the New Testament wasn't written. This is Christ. Read. The words that I speak unto you. Uh -huh. They are spirit. They are spirit. And they are life. So the spirit of God is his words. Now, before we get second Ezra, get Psalms 147 verse 19. All right? Psalms chapter 147 verse 19, then we're going to go to second Ezra 3. Proverbs 123. Proverbs 123, before we get uh, Psalms. Excuse me. All right? Because just so you understand, there's no way that a heathen can have the Holy Spirit. Proverbs check, check, check. Yep. It's 132. All right? We ain't doing the numerology thing right now. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, and verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. See that? 
I will make known my word. My, my word. My what? My word. As the spirit of God is being known in his word. It's his word that he gave. Who did he give it to? So, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. Unto who? Unto Jacob. Unto who? Unto Jacob. Unto Israel. Come on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Who did he deal with? Unto Israel, hey, hey. he have not hey, dealt right so now. with any nation. He have not dealt so with any other nation. You understand that? So there's no way on God's green earth that the Holy Spirit could be in an Edomite and a Moabite. This is all y'all. Uh huh. You, we the real Christians. The you don't. I you don't. Do. You don't. You know why? I, I got it in me. I am in me. Uh huh. Okay. okay. That's a. That's a. That's. That's a. That's the white man's doctrine that you're telling me right now. No, it's not. And we can prove with the Bible. You understand? Not the point, you know and we and you know about the message. Don't you start your problem? Right, we understand. But what 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 I'm trying to get you to understand is you've been taught incorrectly. No. Give me well, Deuteronomy. Don't try to tell him do it. How you gonna try to tell him? All right. Your shoes? Does God love everybody? Look up a spiritual awakening. Does God love everybody? Does God love everybody? It ain't about love, it's about caring. Exactly. Love and caring is the same thing. No, They're hey, synonyms. No, it's it's all, why not? Caring, uh huh. You have to all. You can't just do one thing or the other. You have to love everyone. But you what? what? Can only, how, how can Does God love saved? everybody? I'm the only one race Because listen to this. Give me uh, Luke what chapter they, one, what verse sixty-eight. We just read it in the Bible. What 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 did our forefathers say? They are our enemies. You know why? Because listen, listen. Who needs saving on this earth? That was your question, right? It's not just about me. Who needs saving? Do you know what love is? I do know what love is. According to the Bible, I know. But I at, listen to the question I'm asking. What's your name, bro? What's your name, bro? What's your name, bro? Kurt? Listen. Who needs to be saved? Because you asked about saving. No, no. Listen to my question very carefully. Who needs saving? I ain't know the truth. I am saved. I have the Holy Spirit in me. Okay. That's what you're not understanding. You don't. Why? Because we just read it. We just read it. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it. Actually, as a matter of fact, give me Matthew. You want on 15. We're going to start at verse 21. We're going to show you an example because you say you're a Christian, right? Christians follow after Christ, do they not? Okay. So we're going to get an example of what Christ did. Let's see if Christ loved everybody. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Come on, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. No, no, no. Verse 21. Verse 21. Uh -huh. Then Jesus went this and departed into the coast of Tyre uh -huh. and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, So this woman was not an Israelite. It says she was a woman of Canaan. When you read in uh, Mark, right? She was a Seraphonician by nation. Okay, read. Out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. It says her daughter. She was praying to Jesus. She was asking Jesus, please right, right. save my daughter. She got a devil on her. Right. What happened? But he answered it. But he answered her. Not a word. Whoa, this is Christ that we're talking about. Christ who's supposed to love everybody according to you. What did Christ do? But he answered her. Not a word. You hear that? Christ didn't answer this woman. But if I'm supposed to love everybody, and Christ is supposed to love everybody, why didn't he answer her? Keep reading. Keep reading. And his disciples came and saw him saying, send her away. Wait. Then, not only did Christ ignore her, after that, his disciples came up and said, get her away from us. No. Didn't we read something like that earlier in Ezra? Because you're worried about everybody else, but you're not worried about your own people. Bring it up. Yeah, you can't be worried about your own people what? if you are trying to get everybody else saved with you. What? That's what? like you won the lottery and you're trying to share it with the whole world. Bring That's not up. what happens. We won the lottery. Yeah. The lottery is the yeah. fact that we are getting this right. kingdom yes. by ourselves. Yes. And we're going to do it through the power of God because we got the Holy Spirit. That's what right. the Holy Spirit is. And Christ had the Holy Spirit too. Let's continue. Send her away. Send her away. For she craves after us. Because she's coming after us, begging us for this healing for her daughter. We ain't got nothing to do with her. Come on. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep 
of the house of Israel. His response was that I wasn't sent but to anybody except for the people that you see on this sign right here. The lost sheep of the house of Israel and nobody else. Let's continue reading. Let's see what happened. They can see and worship him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children of bread. It, say, it says, she kept begging for this healing for her daughter. And then he said, what? It is not me to take the children's bread. Who are the children? The children of Israel right That's here. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, so-called. Come on. The children's bread. The children's bread. The bread that's supposed to be for us. That eternal life. That healing. Come on. And to cast it to door. To what? To door. To what? To door. So now, let's rack up what just happened. Christ first ignored this woman. Then the disciples said, send her away. Then Christ told her, I'm not sent but to nobody else except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then, to wrap it all up, he called her a dog. Oh, oh, oh. Guess what? That's an insult. You understand? That's something that you, that's disrespect on the highest level. What? You get called a dog, that's showing you Christ ain't love them. But this is the person that you said that you're following. Christ didn't want to heal everybody. Christ didn't want to do for everybody like you say and do. That's not, that's not what the Bible says. Let's go, actually, uh, Matthew. Hold on. We're we going we to continue. We're going to continue. Because what we out here doing is giving a sense according to the Bible. And what we're giving you is knowledge that you never received before. No. You need to be taught again because you think you know what's in this Bible, but you do. Get uh, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Because, again, this is uh, this is goes right with what we just read in Matthew chapter 15. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Uh -huh. No. And she shall bring forth a son. This was the prophecy about Jesus that the angel gave to Mary. Read. And thou shall call his name Jesus. Uh -huh. For he shall save his people from their sin. Wait. Is he saving everybody? His people. Who are his people? The Israelites. We already read it in Matthew 15. So what you got to understand is that you have been taught incorrectly. Give me Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Bring it out. Real quick, because the testimony, the only testimony we worried about is in this Bible. You understand? Everybody's Christian testimonies we're not here to deal with. Oh. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. When they therefore will come together. Now, in the book of Acts, let me ask you a question just so I get make sure you understand the context. Was Christ dead? Did he already die at this point in time? My brother. I see you over here praying. Now, what at this point in time, when they're asking him this question in the book of Acts, did he already die? You don't know? Okay. He had died already. Let's just get, uh, I'm going to keep it simple for you. He had already died. He's about to get ascended up into heaven. Right. The disciples are about to ask him a very key question. We? Right? Because is the kingdom of heaven for everybody according to you? They're not? Who's it for? We're going to read who it's for right here. Come on. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. When they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, they ask Christ, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? To uh, white men. To Israel? Chinese men. To Israel? No, uh, African. To Israel. See that? Israel and nobody else. Why wouldn't they ask him for the kingdom from everybody else? It's because the kingdom does not pertain unto everybody else. It that's only that's pertains right. to us. That's but you're trying to give that gift away. What? You're trying to give it to other people. It don't belong to them. And God's word is not going to change no matter how you feel about it. Right. You understand? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And fire!